All right. Um, good. So I don't know how many of my four minutes are up already, but I can go through this quickly because uh, I, um, when I submitted this uh, lightning talk, I didn't know I was going to be on a panel in the afternoon. So if I run out of time, it's okay. I will just start, you know, spill it over into the uh, when you're going to get to see me up here again in the afternoon. I want to talk a little bit about uh, a little bit of work that I've been doing. You heard yesterday when John was giving uh, the opening keynote. Uh, you know, he was asking for how many journals we have, and you've probably seen that little graph that shows uh, and the map, uh, that colorful map that shows how many OJS journals there are. That's been work that I've been uh, sort of doing in a very painstaking way over the last uh, several years, uh, along with uh, Alex Garnett. And this year, we also decided, uh, along with uh, Kevin and with a master's student, Derek Hansen, a master's student in the publishing program, to also try to, so we've done that work of collecting information about the journals, but we wanted to also try to dig a little bit deeper into who are these journals, because we kind of get asked this question all of the time. Um, I think John has described at one point that somebody described OJS journals as the bottom feeders of the publishing world, and so we wanted to dig into a little bit who are these journals, because we know that there is a lot of great work being published in OJS journals um, out there. Um, there's two big parts to this problem. The first is that, uh, as you know, it's a distributed platform that anybody can download and install anywhere in the world. And so if we had a centralized platform, we would know exactly how many journals were on it. But because these things are just installed all over the world, uh, we need to find out where they are. And then the second piece is that we actually have no real way of knowing what's going on inside of these journals because we haven't been exposing any of that, the, the inner workings of, of those journals. And so we need to find out how they work. So it's a little bit what we're trying to do. So first, finding them. It is a very convoluted process. This is why uh, you know, John has received an email about 10 different times saying that we're over the 10,000 mark, and then I realize that there's something that might not be quite right. This process involves crawling through our server logs and identifying links that look like OJS installations, and then going out and checking if they actually are OJS installations. Uh, and then sometimes things have two different URLs even though they're at the same place, because that's how the internet works. Sometimes there's just an IP address that also points to the same place. Uh, and then sometimes there's multiple journals at a single installation. So we need to sort of go out, check that it's an OJS installation, figure out whether or not uh, it's a duplicate of one that we already have. Then we need to find the OAI endpoint that all conveniently all OJS journals have. And then we need to harvest all of that information to make sure that they actually have content, that it's not just an empty installation. And then we need to do some number crunching to try to figure out where they are located uh, and uh, how many articles they have, how many, what are the publishing dates. We also have to deal with some of the quirks around what the metadata is for those articles to be able to try to extract the actual published date. It is actually a fairly complicated process that we only have a certain you know, degree of certainty that it is accurate. But it is, that, to the best of our knowledge, these is how we've managed to count how many journals there are. And so I do have the uh, luxury of being able to pull out the latest numbers that is once again over 10,000. John, if you look up. Okay, over 10,000 for both 2015 and 2016 in the number uh, of journals published. This is, we put an arbitrary threshold of at least 10 articles published per year to be able to say, okay, well, if they have 10 articles in 2015, we're going to say that it's a journal for 2015. Again, we don't, we can't really see exactly what's going on inside. We look at how many articles are published. We're publishing over 400,000 articles a year over the last couple of years. Okay, so that number has gone up. It always drops off a little bit for the latest year because of what is the, um, there's always some delays in publication or a delay in us finding them through this process. Okay, the distribution all over the world, right? Latin America, very strong, some in uh, Asia, North America uh, as well. So this is just the latest, it's up on the website as of uh, Dominique's talk. Okay, learning how they work. So then we went out and surveyed these things. We sent out from all of this journals we collected, we got 8,000 or so valid email addresses. We got about 2,000 responses. So that's you know, about 25% of the people responded to our survey that we conducted. It was a fairly short, simple survey, trying to find out what disciplines they are. Huge number of social science journals that are published uh, using uh, OJS, and more than twice any other of the, of the disciplines. Okay. The thing about open access, right, we want to know, are, is OJS really supporting open access? Well, 88 and a half percent of those journals that responded were freely available, uh, to ma were making the content freely available immediately. And only 2% 
were never making their content freely available, right? So the thing in between those two is people that are make, have some kind of a delayed uh, open access or some kind of a, a moving paywall of, of, of some kind. But again, almost 90% of the OJS journals are open access, right? Well above the percentage of open access journals uh, sort of worldwide. And in the, uh, to speaking about the issue of APCs, these OJS journals, for the most part, are not publishing, are not charging APCs, right? Only 13.5% are, are charging APCs. The vast majority of them are not. Okay, this varies by country. This gives us, yeah, some very quick uh, uh, breakdown that is not the same everywhere that we are. We can also start looking at some of the different ways in which they are getting support, and right, we can see that in certain, the, most of them are, about half of them, 60%, get some support from academic units. I'll have these slides available for you to look, dig into this into more detail, and we'll publish it at some point. Okay? And we've also been asking questions around what kind of support that they're getting, and we're seeing all kinds of sort of very interesting breakdowns, and we can, when we break these down by countries, also shows us that uh, in some cases the editors, uh, uh, the editors for the most part are not paid for, right? We see that in the reviewers, for well, almost none of them are paid for, but then we start seeing where the costs actually come. They're about to physically remove it from the stage, so I'll walk off myself. 